The walk and turn is one of the three tests of the standardized field sobriety test that officers will give you when you're pulled over for the DUI. Uh, what the officer is basically doing is seeing if you can listen to instructions and do physical movement. So that's a test by itself. But they're looking generally for eight clues. Uh, the first clue that the officer is looking for first is on an imaginary or an actual line. They're going to have you stand there. And while they're giving these instructions, they're also watching you. The test has already started. While they're giving the instructions, they're seeing if you are wobbly or you can't even stay on the line during the instructions. That's the first clue. Uh, the second clue is while the officer uh, is giving the instructions, a lot of people start the test already, even before listening to all the instructions. So that's the second clue. The third clue would be while you're walking, the officer uh, knows that you're supposed to touch heel to toe and the person doesn't touch heel to toe. Uh, the fourth clue would be while you're walking, if you use your arms for balance. Uh, fifth clue would be if you step off the line. The sixth clue is if you uh, are, are turning on your ninth step, you're supposed to do nine steps and then small pivoting steps back. If you don't do the small pivoting steps back towards the officer. Uh, the uh, seventh clue would be if you do an incorrect number of steps and coming back to the officer. And the eighth clue is while you're doing your steps, if you actually stop walking and you know, stop for a longer than a, a second or two. You can stop, but you can't stop to try to regain balance for four or five or ten seconds. Uh, that would be the eighth clue. Out of these eight clues, officers are basically scoring you that if you get two or more of those clues, you have failed. So it just takes two of those eight, and then you, the officer will write that you have failed that field sobriety test. There are several valid reasons for failing the walk and turn. Uh, the, the most basic would be whether or not the walk and turn test was done on an even surface. I mean, the officers are supposed to, according to NHTSA, which is the NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they're supposed to find an area that is even. So some of the officers do it on slopes, on driveways, uh, on uneven gravel on the side of a freeway. So. When you look at the, just the basics, it has to be done on an even surface, and a surface that doesn't have a lot of rocks on it. And a concern for women would be when women wear high heel shoes. So officers, according to NHTSA, officers are supposed to ask the person if they're wearing two inch high heels or more, they're supposed to ask them if they want to take those shoes off. Uh, obviously, the surface needs to be clear if you're taking a field sobriety test, a walk and turn test on uneven ground, on ground that has a lot of rocks or glass or debris. Uh, there's other uh, things that can come into play when it comes down to walk and turn, such as the age and weight of a person. Uh, in Nevada, 65 years or older and 50 pounds or more over, overweight. Uh, that becomes a factor that is brought up in trial. Uh, injuries, if anybody has had injuries, you know, operations on their back, their, their legs, their feet, uh, those become uh, a factor too when it comes to trial.